All right, now let's get this to focus. Now we got this bypassing the light completely. We're gonna turn this on. We're gonna make sure this is off. It's off. Oh, something happened. I think there's a bad connection in one of these little uh, alligator clamps. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, because it, it turned on no problem that time now that I played with it. So I think that's my problem. So we got a 132 volts. That seems kind of high. Interesting. I'm going to turn this on. And it's on. Look at that. 130 volts though. That's a little high. I'm going to have to turn that... Uh, that pot down a little bit, but let's see here. Oh yeah, it was. Oh yeah, it's getting warmer, right? Awesome. Next is going to be to put the oscilloscope on here and check the frequency and check the the waveform. It's a little bit high. 132 volts, is a little bit high, but that's what this pot right there. See that thing? That's what that's for. Probably just uh, something to do with a different board has to be adjusted a little bit that's no big deal but I am very happy with this right now I'm gonna disconnect it now we gotta just put it back together and hopefully have a good working inverter I don't know if I'm gonna put more than 10 amps per transformer I'm gonna do the math and figure out how many watts output that can do without frying um, but we'll see I'm, I might put the full 20 amps in but I'm undecided, undecided right now Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. The only thing left to do now is put the little plastic spacers in at the bottom. Rehook your ground up. Put your case on. Or rehook your power lugs as well. But uh, this seems to be a repaired inverter. I, I bought this as a kit uh, from Reliable Electric. Um, if you want a repair kit I would just ask them I would just straight up tell them I got a blown inverter I want a repair kit I want everything I want the MOSFETs I want these two control boards this one and this one I didn't have to replace these little die or these little resistors this time but I have before on a SWI inverter these do sometimes go so I got lucky and these didn't go um, so it made this repair a lot easier to replace these tiny little things sucks like crazy but it is doable this repair took me about two hours maybe a little less I was fooling around here and there and it wasn't I wasn't working on this the whole time probably could have got it done in about an hour hour and a half so the repair time isn't super bad as long as you have a nice solder and iron it's, this thing's so wide that it, it just made taking everything off really easy Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll have a shot of this completely assembled next. And just like that, I got it all back together. Missing some screws. Uh, that's how it was shipped to me. Total time to repair. About three hours to put back together. Get everything the way it was. Um, but, it works. So, is it worth it to repair a $400 inverter yes and no uh, it is if you can do it yourself it's worth it if you gotta pay somebody else to do it not worth it buy a new one uh, it's gonna cost you more uh, in shipping and parts and stuff just this one I, I, I fixed for free for uh, a subscriber and parts and shipping back to his house is still a hundred bucks and that's with my free labor and and that's me getting the parts directly from the manufacturer uh, as cheap as possible so anyways now we're gonna move on to our next uh, group of videos and that is stress testing this unit at 1500 watts because this guy's already had problems with his inverter if it can't do 1500 watts this 3000 watt inverter continuous it's garbage. It's going to be garbage for him. It's either going to blow up with me testing it here or it's going to blow up when he gets it. So I'm going to get it on camera and I'm going to test the inverter and see if it works. And now we're on to the stress tests of this inverter. 
I got it hooked up to my massive 48 volt battery bank. I got it hooked up through a 60 amp fuse. And that's less rated amperage than what's internally on this thing. I got a, two, a 750 watt heater and a 200 watt heater. We're going to start with that first. We're going to start with the 200 watt, make our way to the 750, both, and then uh, we're eventually going to go uh, 1500 watt heater. So let's see what's going on here. So voltage is a little high. Still have to tweak that uh, pot, but that's with a 200 watt load. We want to make sure the fans work. So let's see how we go. How's it going? Uh, the voltage is going up because I have the MagnaSign charging these batteries from my power wall. We're sitting at 62.6 volts. And the 8000 watt inverter is doing amazing still. Oh, we're getting up there. Maybe we should put another load on. We'll turn this one off. So we have the 750 watt. So what happens when we turn both of them on? That eh, seems to be fine. So the 750 watt heater is on. We're just going to run this till the, the fans turn on. Seems to be working quite well. So as you can see I have three heaters. 200 watt, 750, and a 1500 watt. Right now the only one plugged in and running, is, or it's going to be running is the 750. When I turn this on, so this one is running. We're gonna let that run for a bit. I don't know. Can you guys see what's on the display? The display is saying, what is the display saying? 857 watts. That's because the voltage is so high. It's got to be turned down. So that's what we're making. So we're going to go 750 plus 250. We're sitting at uh, 1150 watts. <coughs> I'm going to let the batteries, my gel batteries go dead. Not dead, but go down a bit. Give them a little bit of workout. Turn the charger off. So this is 1,024 watts, 130 volts. Everything's still ice cold. This is going to take a while, but I want to slowly warm up this inverter. I don't want to go blowing it again or it, won't, or it will be me blowing it for the first time but I don't want to fix it again anyways and now I don't mind running the heaters because it heats the room the battery room as you can see today no breath you can't see my breath so that's nice we really want to see these fans turn on so this is 1,020 watt load on a 3,000 watt inverter. This should mean absolutely nothing. I might actually turn this on low and see what happens. So now we got 1,300, 1,400, 1,500 watts, 1,513. 122 volts on the out. 1,570, almost 1,600 watts now. This thing should start warming up ever so slowly. 1,600 watts, almost exactly. 121 volts in the output, that's pretty good. This off, and I'm going to put some thermal paste around this thermistor. Now 
has got every chance possible. Put the case back on so that it uh, it would act as though as, as if the case was on. I'm not going to screw it down. And the fans came on. Look at that. Looks like I was on the very edge. I'm going to put these all on so it's on 1600 watts again. So now the inverter's fans are staying on. That's good. Now I'd like to see them cycle back off. So I'm going to turn this heater off. I'm going to turn this heater off. I'll leave just the 200 watt on. Let's see what happens. There's a slight uh, sag in the lines because I got 20 feet worth of 2 gauge booster cable. And there you have it. The cooling seems to be working. Let's get it to turn on again. 1600 watts. Leave it like this till one more uh, cycle on the fan. And then I might push it a little bit more. Got to get to at least around 2000 watts. I want to make sure that this thing is actually outputting what it's supposed to output. The fans just kicked back in on the inverter. Now we're going to kick it up. 1500 watts on that heater. Now we're at 2000. Oh, look at that. It kicked out. Looks like it can't do 2000 watts. It's very interesting. Okay, let's turn everything back off. Well, we didn't fry anything. That's good. It's a really good sign. Okay. Let's try just this on 1500 watts. So we are pulling 14, 1480, 1500, 1501. <coughs> so we're pulling about 1500 watts. Let's see how many watts we can actually pull. Can we pull? Nope. 1500 watts plus. 750 it can't do okay so there's something funky going on in this it's not it should be able to run that so this is maybe my repair wasn't a hundred percent successful uh, it's maybe it's more like a 2000 watt inverter now so hmm what can I do here we can do this 200 and this uh, six or fifteen hundred watt load. Let's see if we can run that. So it can run that. It's running seventeen hundred, seventeen hundred watts. Hmm. But it can't run eighteen hundred. Or I mean, uh, two thousand. Or actually, that'd be more than two thousand. That would be like twenty two hundred or so. That's interesting. Looks like this 3000 watt inverter is limited to about 2000 watts now. I don't know if it was already like this before um, my repair job or not, but that's what we're at now. And yeah, it's very interesting. Anyways, it's better than a dead inverter. It's putting out uh, 3,000 or 2,000 watts approximately instead of 3,000. Hmm. It is interesting though. Turn that down and turn this on. That brings us up to what? 2,000 watts. We're at 2,000 watts right now. 